Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, last time I was here, um, we were it was my birthday and I was promised I'd get another opportunity next year. But already I've been given another opportunity to share with you and encourage you. So I'm in Sean's beautiful office and um, I want to just pick up where Sean left off yesterday. One thing that he said to me was, uh, take every opportunity because the days are evil. And I just want to share a little testimony with you and a little bit of insight into uh, taking opportunities. Because um, the days are evil. Things are not the same. Things have changed rapidly and people like sheep are fearful, worried, anxious and dispersing, looking for salvation. Um, and so I've been really spending a lot of time trying to wait on the Lord, trying to get away from distractions. And as I've started to do that, I feel like God's speaking to me about His kingdom. And everywhere I'm looking, I'm seeing the world and I'm seeing the kingdom. I was in Starbucks and it says, we're going to change the world one cup at a time. And I just thought, even people, even companies trying to market salvation through cups of coffee. The world has nothing on Jesus. And we're in a time of high volatility where people are looking to nation states, to political ideologies, to meditation, to exercise, to whatever your salvation, whatever your cup of coffee is. That's what you're looking for your salvation. And I just feel like God's saying the kingdom, the king is the one who's going to save. And so as, as this is unfolding, I really feel like uh, taking the opportunity is what's important. And so what I've found is that when you take an opportunity, you are ready. You are ready uh, and prepared. And so what's happened this week is I've had one of, I'm, a, I'm an English teacher, and I had one of our parents somehow through just WhatsApping back and forth, found out that she was a Seventh-day Adventist, and she completely believes that we should follow the law. And I don't usually try and put the gospel when I'm working, and I try and keep a professional uh, line between professional and, and kingdom. And as I'm being stirred about the kingdom, I just felt like, you know what, let's break that line. Let's take the opportunity. And so very unprofessionally, I brought the kingdom of God. And over the last two days, I've been going back and forth, fleshing out for her the, what the gospel says about the law passing away and salvation through Christ and faith. And what's happening is that I am starting to become... Uh, honed and sharpened because I'm reading my Bible in a very different way. Usually I read my Bible just to feed me. And as I'm starting to read my Bible and, and I'm starting to ask questions and challenge, where's that scripture and what does it mean for this? I'm starting to realize that by taking an opportunity, what it happens is it starts to create a cycle where as you start to preach the gospel and the kingdom, you start into this beautiful, vicious cycle where as you live out the gospel passionately with your words and your actions, people start to see that. And as people start to see that, they ask you more questions. And as they ask you more questions, you go down that path. And so it's a, a beautiful, vicious cycle of the gospel flowing out in and through your lives because you're living out for a purpose. And I, and I strongly believe that if you, as an English teacher, I speak to my students and they, I've had many students who will come and they'll learn their English over several years and they will leave us and within a, a space of a few months, whatever English they've learned, they start to lose if they don't use it. And so we have this saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. And it's same with the, the kingdom of God. Although we have the Spirit of God guaranteeing a deposit for our salvation, the gospel and taking that opportunity is something that we need to be using. It's an, it's an exercise. It's a muscle. And as we use it, it becomes stronger and it becomes more, um, uh, becomes more visible for the world to see the light that we're holding. And we all, we all have the kingdom of God living in, in us. We all have that. But when the scripture says, take the opportunity, that's where we add our will and our intention and our consistency 
to the power of God. And all it does is it takes us to take a diet of all the distractions and all the things that are trying to take our focus off. And as we start to feed ourselves, we got this vicious cycle of the kingdom and the gospel of God flowing through us, flowing out of us and attracting and more. And that's what the kingdom of God should look like. It should be an every day, not a work. And then you go to church. It should be an every day occurrence. And so my challenge is and my encouragement is in this time where you have more time, don't waste time. Use the time wisely. Let the gospel of God grip your heart. Give an opportunity for God to start that vicious cycle in your life where it starts to eat away all your the distractions and pinpoints and laser light focus onto the very intention. We shouldn't be sitting in Starbucks reading the cup of coffee will change the world. We should be seeing the words come from our own mouths changing the world around us. And that's what it means to take the opportunity in these evil times. And so that's my encouragement for today. Have you had any past testimonies where you've had students that you've, you've shared the gospel with that have come back to you years later or you've helped or you've challenged or you've in influenced families? It's, fu it's funny you say that. I just got a, a Facebook from um, a friend of mine from Spain and we met in university about... 12 years ago and he had a incident and in when he was young his 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 father passed away and the church the catholic church in his village treated his mother and him very poorly and he hated religion and he came across me at university i was a little 18 year old nobody and he's about 22 when he came across me and we had this full-on theological fight and I was just trying to share the gospel and he was just angry. It turns out over the space of three years, he came to me one night in tears and just said, Seamus, I can't live without Jesus. You have, you have convicted me that either I go down deaths or I go down life. And he gave his life to Jesus. But anyway, we left university and years, years later, this is 12 years later, he just WhatsApp, for, uh, Facebook me. Uh, last week and he said how are you doing brother God bless you and he's just on fire as he was before and for me that's like that's the greatest fruit because I haven't seen him I haven't been the good Christian and kept in contact but something of that resonance of the gospel and the kingdom of God something of that seed produces fruit and uh, that, that for me is, is, yeah, you say, has anything happened? That's just the sweetest stuff that comes to my ears.